Uh, I mean, it may, may sound strange, but the very first Apple I that was ever built was actually given to a person back in the days before computers were ever heard of, who wheeled it into fourth through, and taught fourth through sixth graders a little bit of the elements of what a computer is. The uh, virtue of the computer in the classroom is that the, it requires a user, not, not a watcher. What we do in science is we build models. We do most of our testing with models. We do most of our thinking with models. And then later on, if we're honest, we try and relate these models back to the outside world. And these models are our voodoo dolls. They used to be built in mathematics. Now they're being built uh, in increasing form on the computer. So simulation is what the computer is all about. And uh, all the different ways you can simulate things are uh, what the computer's destiny is. The biggest problem teachers have is motivating students to want to learn. And if the computer can relieve the teacher of that uh, uh, burden, because the teacher today is competing with television and competing with a lot of distractions, if the teacher has that tool to uh, bring the kids to a kind of a, a fever pitch of wanting to complete a task, wanting to see something accomplished successfully, then I think that this will become a tremendous resource for the teacher. It won't supplant the teacher. Life is wonderful, huh? And you want to get that over to the kids. Look, you can go over the top, you come to, around to this side, look at it from the other side. Good, now what about what's going on on the inside? Well, the crater up here was from an eruption a long time ago. You can see the cracks where the lava came down. Here's the top of the volcano. The crater was caused by an eruption a long time ago. Show us where the magma is. The, ma the part is the magma underneath the Earth's crust. The heat from the magma creates pressure against the surface of the Earth. When volcanoes erupt, the magma comes out through the cracks in the Earth's crust, and the cracks are called fissures. I knew that. What's it really look like? This is what a volcanic eruption looks like in real life. being able to speak and get natural responses. The metaphor of kind of a human personality in the computer, um, certainly I think that's one of the, the big directions that computers will go. The computer having very personal characteristics, speaking in a natural human voice. Elements moving on the screen as the computer describes what's happening. Still giving the, the advantage of a computer, which is it's interactive. The student can back up, ask a question about something collaborate with a friend, and it doesn't run by continuously like uh, television does. I'm not sure to what extent computers are being used now for adult literacy, but I feel persuaded that it, it's a much more effective tool uh, than, than uh, the school situation for most adults because the computer's not threatening. An adult, if you have a good program, an adult can sit down with the computer and make mistakes and not be reprimanded and not feel humiliated even though the, uh, d the teachers may not want to humiliate the student, a lot of times someone who's 30 or 40 years old is so ashamed of not being able to read uh, that uh, the, the interaction with other people may be quite intimidating, whereas the computer is not. After filling the engine with oil, the coil wire should be grounded and the engine cranked by the starter motor until the oil pre... What's this word? Pressure. Oh, pressure. Until the oil pressure gauge reads 10 pounds. Would you like to go on to lesson six? Uh, no, I, I want to read this. The Oakland A's begin an important home stand tonight. Well, of course, I would expect it to be able to accept speech. Uh, keyboarding is a truly primitive way of getting information into the machine. 
So to begin with, I would want it to do that. Almost as important to me, and I think vitally important to the world, is I want it to do automatic translation. Even if that translation is not 100% perfect, there's no such thing. I want to be able to read books in Swedish and Japanese and Hungarian and Arabic and Hebrew and Greek and Chinese, and I can't. Well, I think the, you know, the supercomputers of today will be the desktop computers of tomorrow. And the, I mean, there are two kinds of things that you can do with more computing power. You can do more of what you want to do now uh, faster, and you can occasionally do some things that you would be unthinkable to do now. This is some pretty convincing stuff. I need all the ammo I can get from a meeting with Professor Thorndike and his committee of invertebrates. Look, see how the engine creates a lot of turbulence, especially at high speeds? So? Well, this causes a lot of noise and also creates a certain amount of drag. Much like? Thorndike. The oscillation starts inside the nozzle and the turbulence really increases outside. You tried flaring the exhaust nozzle. Sure, I've tested a lot of possible angles. I noticed that the oscillation is a lot lower when you have something like this, about 14 degrees. Hmm. We should test this. Can you talk to Gavin about a prototype of the nozzle? Sure. And can you add these changes to the specs? Sure. And can you meet with Thorndike? Get out. The implication of this much computing power at a very affordable cost is partly one of those because of the fact it's so radically different than anything we could have ever expected, where the, the very hugest supercomputers of, of my lifetime, early in my lifetime, are now equaled by inexpensive personal computers that you can buy everywhere and everyone can own. It's like you can't even say, where, the, where is this going to go? So the ideas about hypermedia and what their possibilities can be have been around for a long time. And they have always been to be able to cut your own trails through information of your own, other people's information, weave in your stuff with other people, the trails now constitute a new kind of a book. Select the nozzle. Modify. Let's see noise test three again. Okay, change the nozzle dimensions to the ones in noise test three. Great. Let's see performance requirements. Regulations noise. Link the noise regulations to the nozzle dimensions. Nozzle dimensions. Uh, I don't know what the next extension of that is except a, a, an enrichment of it uh, through going through uh, looking at a, uh, a book of mine not simply as a page of text but also having behind that page of text as uh, uh, access to additional information that enriches the text supplement it with documents, original source material, writings of the period, and begin to get what every historian would love to achieve, which is a, a real sense of the time. So if we had a machine that we could play games with and uh, take each subject to its farthest point, you could say to the machine, how come I love dinosaurs so much? Show me all the covers of the science fiction magazines my father and my grandfather grew up with that caused us to become scientists or technologists, to fall in love with the future. The things that make us want to live forever. But that sort of machine, I think, would be absolutely incredible for a child to play with. We're all doing the same thing, same work, but we're doing it in different ways. And saying, my God, isn't this exciting? Huh? The, what we have here to prove that mankind has moved from here to here and can move even further to here.